welcome. So good to see all of you. And uh, we just learned about sleep and how important sleep is for all of us. And so to now we're gonna learn about yoga nidra, which is really going to give you the benefits both of restful sleep and of meditation. Uh, what could give us both of those? Well, that is yoga nidra. So first of all, many of us have learned or have heard that we all need to meditate. And really we know that meditation nowadays is the antidote to stress. But the issue is for most of us that even with meditation, we can find it stressful, especially for those of us who are just beginning to meditate. So we sit down to meditate and there's the stress on our back. There's the stress on our knees. There's the stress of observing our thoughts. We often spend more time watching the clock than watching our thoughts. Well, if you are one of those people who knows that you should meditate but have a hard time doing it, yoga nidra is probably something for you. So I think of yoga nidra as sleep, uh, sorry, yoga nidra as meditation made easy. So if you can lie down and not fall asleep, you can do yoga nidra. And even if you do fall asleep, because many people do use it to fall asleep, you will still get many of the restorative benefits of yoga nidra. Okay. So yoga nidra is a meditation that is based on something that your body already knows how to do which is to fall asleep. So every night when you fall asleep, we go down into brain waves. And as we go down through alpha and theta brainwave states, all the way down into delta, our thoughts begin to move further and further away from us. And it's in that gap between us and our thoughts that we're actually able to fall into sleep. And we know this because if we're thinking too much and we have too many thoughts, we don't get that gap and we don't fall asleep. Yoga Nidra is great for that, by the way. So really what happens is in Yoga Nidra, we are using a series of body, breath, and awareness techniques that will allow you to follow the same brain waves down as if you're going to sleep. And when that gap arises between you and your thoughts, we don't fall into sleep, but rather we rest with gentle awareness in that gap between us and our thoughts. And the beauty of yoga nidra then is that we're not struggling to meditate. We're not trying to meditate. Meditation happens naturally. You're resting in a state where naturally your thoughts are distanced from you, where you're watching your thoughts go by. And for those of us who are struggling with sleep, you've now entered right that twilight zone between waking and sleeping that will allow you to now then fall into a deep and restful sleep. So the beauty of yoga nidra, and many of you have already heard this, is that 45 minutes of yoga nidra is actually said to be as restorative as three hours of sleep. And this is because of the extended alpha theta and delta brainwave activity that you get when you're practicing yoga nidra. When you're in these deeply regenerative states, alpha, theta, and delta brainwave states, your body is deeply and profoundly restoring itself. It's healing itself. And this is where a whole host of healthy natural pharmaceuticals are released from within your own body. You don't have to take a pill because your body is releasing it from within you. So as you go down into these states where you're doing less and less, your body is actually releasing more and more serotonin that gives you a feeling of intense well-being. It regulates your moods. Um, GABA, which helps you feel more calm. It helps you manage stress. Cortisol, stress hormone, is taken out of your system. You release dopamine that gives you a feeling of reward. It gives you a natural high, actually. Um, endorphins are released from your system. All, actually, in meditation and yoga nidra, the same amount of endorphins are released into your system as when you go running. That's huge. That's great for me because I'm not a big runner, but I can practice yoga nidra and get those endorphins. That's what gives you that intense feeling of well-being. And endorphins are also natural painkillers that are released in your body. 
So here's what happens. We're doing less and less and your body is beginning to restore and regenerate itself from the inside out. And with Yoga Nidra, we can actually consciously go to these states where your body is able to restore itself at an accelerated rate. Yogis would say even at an ex at ex extended rate, even more than sleep itself, okay? You're going to have to see for yourself if that's true for you. I'm going to guide you in a nidra in just a little bit. So there are two major benefits of yoga nidra that I'm going to talk about today. The first one is many of us are engaging in stressful thoughts all the time without even knowing it. We have habitual thought patterns. And yoga nidra as a meditation is going to help you create a different relationship with those stress producing thoughts. All right. It's going to help you observe the thoughts rather than become the thoughts. And when you're watching your thoughts go by, rather than being your thoughts and becoming them, you don't have the same biochemical reaction to them. And therefore, your body doesn't get as stressed. You don't get the same reaction. The second thing that you're going to experience when you're practicing yoga nidra is the use of intention. And this is a little bit different than typical meditation, where we not only go into these subtle states and observe our thoughts, but we're actually learning to gently redirect our thoughts in ways that are more helpful, more positive, that actually build us in the direction that we want to go. So if we're constantly thinking, I hate my job, why do I have to do this, my life is so hard, with Yoga Nidra we can actually begin to redirect and rewrite some of those thought patterns that are consistently having an effect in our body. So Yoga Nidra gives us the benefit of both meditation by observing our stressful thoughts and intention allowing us to rewrite and redirect those stressful thoughts as well. All right. So there's a beautiful, powerful study that was done um, with the Health, Education, and Wellness Institute of Massachusetts. And what they were looking at is what are the greatest determining factors that are likely to cause someone to die from coronary heart disease? Okay. So again, the question was, what is most likely to cause me or someone else to die from a heart attack? And what they found as a result of this study was all the expected things. The amount of exercise you get determines, you know, if you're going to have a heart attack or not. Diet, heredity, smoking, stress. These were all at the top of the list. But what they found at the very top of the list, above everything, the greatest determining factor of your likelihood to die of a heart attack was based on the answer to two questions. And the questions were, are you happy? And do you enjoy your job? Are you happy? And do you enjoy your job? Above diet, above exercise, above heredity, above sleep, above smoking, I'm not, all of that, above that, are you happy? And do you enjoy your job? Okay, so I'm not saying we should all suddenly go out and start smoking cigarettes and stop exercising. <laughs> what I am saying is we need to start paying attention to the repetitive thoughts that we are repeating, that we are saying to ourselves over and over and over again, because they can create as much of a toxic environment within us as smoking can. And with this practice of meditation, you can begin to do these two things. You can begin to distance yourself from those toxic thought patterns so that instead of becoming them and letting them have this biochemical effect in your body, you can begin to observe them. You can allow them to pass through. And second, when you find yourself getting caught over and over in the same thought patterns, I hate my job, how much longer, I don't like my life, when you see yourself doing this, with the use of intention planted at the subtlest states of being, you can begin to redirect to a more positive, a more a beneficial way of thinking about and being in life.
So today, as I guide you through a yoga nidra, I'm gonna lead you through a series of body, breath, and awareness techniques, a little mini experience, uh, taking you down through the brain waves. We're going to be doing these two things. As we go through this process, you will begin to get a little bit of distance between the thoughts and emotions that are usually creating chemical effects in your body. And second, I will be offering you some health and healing affirmations that begin to redirect your thought patterns and create beneficial effects in your body. Here's the, here's the thing, guys. If you can think your way into creating a heart attack, that's not so great, but it does mean that you can literally create effects in your body based on the way that you're thinking. So why not use this principle to our benefit? If we can create physical benefits from how we're thinking, let's create positive physical benefits based on how we're thinking. And that's what we're gonna do with the use of intention. All right, so in order to receive this yoga nidra, it is usually done lying down. So if you are in a comfortable place, go ahead and lie down on your couch or in your bed. Generally speaking, you'll lie on your back. Uh, your body temperature will drop, so do cover yourself with a blanket. And I'm just gonna lead you through a mini experience, all right? And if you cannot lie down, that's perfectly fine. <clears throat> just find yourself in a place where you feel comfortable, where you're least likely to move. So just go ahead, and as you're ready, just close your eyes. And allow your attention to turn inward. Feel your whole body beginning to soften and relax. Breathe in fully and exhale with a deep sigh. And again, inhale and exhale, let go even more. And feel a deep sense of peace and contentment begin to wash over you. Now bring your body into your awareness. Recognize that your body has been a trusted vehicle, creating accomplishments and contributions to the best of its ability. Now is the time for your body to rest deeply. Now follow my guidance as we take three deep breaths. If you should not be holding your breath for any reason, just pause momentarily at the top of the inhalation before exhaling again. Ready, let's inhale, hold the breath in. Let tension build a little bit. And then as you feel the impulse, release the breath slow and steady. Breathing normally. And simply observe the breath settling down. Second breath now, inhale together. Hold the breath in, closing off the throat and holding a bit longer, but without strain. And as you feel the impulse, release the breath all the way out, breathing out any tension with the outgoing breath. And then just breathing normally. Releasing any excess tension with each outgoing breath. And third breath, inhale together. Hold the breath in. Holding even longer now, but without strain. Remain the neutral observer. 
And only as you feel the impulse, release the breath slow and steady, breathing it all out until there's nothing left, until you're empty and open, breathing normally. And simply observing the breath, becoming progressively quieter, and more still until it's almost impossible to detect. Now feel yourself descending down into the stillness beneath the mind. All excess tension and holding carried out with each exhaling breath. Now simply become aware of the rising and falling of the breath. This time, as you breathe in through your nose, fill your lungs. And as you exhale, exhale as if breathing through a straw. So you're going to breathe in through the nose. And then opening your lips, breathe out as if you're blowing through a straw. Continue on your own, breathing in through the nose. And breathing out through a straw. Breathe in completely and breathe out completely without strain. Each time you exhale, empty your mind of all anticipations, your body of all tensions. As you inhale, fill your heart with joy. Continue to breathe with constant attention and detached awareness. Each time you inhale, drop into a deeper level of silent awareness, stillness and peace. Breath is calm. Mind is silent. Now return to your normal breathing pattern and turn your attention inward. Feel yourself dropping into the deepest level of silent stillness peace and harmony. Settle into the silent spaciousness of being. Now, as I name each body part, experience it directly without interpretation or analysis. All 10 toes, both ankles, both knees, upper legs, 
hips, belly, chest, arms, face, back of the head, shoulder blades, back, buttocks, calves, heels, soles of the feet. Sense the whole body from the top of the head to the tips of the toes. Now give yourself permission to enter the deepest level of relaxation right now. Let go. Open, empty of all doing. Empty of all past, all future. Just allow yourself to receive the following affirmations as I repeat them. Let your whole body and every cell listen to what I say. The quieter my mind becomes, the more profoundly my life energy is restored. I feel my body deeply rejuvenating itself. Every cell in my body is bathed in radiant, healing energy. And slowly begin to deepen your inhalations and exhalations. Allowing your inhalations to be a bit more full, your exhalations a bit more complete. If you feel the impulse to move or stretch, gently awakening yourself, you may do so. Or we're going into a 10 minute break so feel free to just rest here as long as you like. <laughs> 